My grandma and your grandma sitting by the fire. My grandma told your grandma, I'm gonna set your ass on fire. Talking about, hey now, hey now, I go, I go, I name. Jacques and Mofino, I name. Jacques Mofino, I name. I 
see that? These are just, just like you're scratching here. Uh, corrupted people have it all wrong. This is not a natural movement. This is a learned response. And the problem with that is, this is natural. I bet a lot of us bet at dinner, the best steakhouse in Dallas, and during the day to that day, they'll scratch your ear without noticing at least four times. We have a video, I bet you. Because it's so natural to be jumping if you like this. That's an actual movement. All you have to do is learn to get off the line of attack. So many people I've asked, and I'm going to get off and reply to you in just a moment, so we'll go for a walk and you can see. But a lot of people do box, they work against unarmed technique. Okay? They block like this. Down with my town. Pull back. This is his natural reaction. You see what happened? Go. Pull back. Natural reaction, right? Then they teach you X block. Tell me that. Oh, how many risks do you get? All of them. Well, <laughs> we need to keep G at that point. It's a Korean instructor to say. Then you buy a book. I had this book written by the FBI, and I taught CIA, FBI. I was, in, I was the instructor for the Marines and, and based on, on in Bell Chase, I taught 150 U.S. Marines. I always got the biggest store man in the place and I dropped it right away. And then they'd say, yes sir, no sir, yes sir! But then all. Okay? So, we're, if we're doing, if we're doing a block or whatever we're doing, we used to all say, so look, look guys, and do a look here. Get back up with this hand if you want. What is your natural reaction? You pull it back, right? That's right. Go. Natural reaction, go. What's your natural reaction? Look. Natural reaction from a block. This is a simple block. Now you say, well, since it what if he straightens his arm? Look, he pulls it back straight. Look. Look, once when I was young and I was doing a seminar on the TV bells, I, I carved my initials in the buttons. And the young attorney ran across the map and said, Sensei, tell me you were joking. There are too many attorneys on the map. Tell me you were joking. This is California. So I really don't care what he does. And you say, Well, Sensei, what if he pushes on forward? What do you do? I moved with the knife again. Anybody notice it? I gave him the haircut three. It doesn't matter what he does. I just don't block. And it's all soft blocks. Judo. My sensei used to say that we train jujitsu. We live judo. You understand that? We live judo. It means pliable, pliable art, pliable way. I used to think when I was a boy, and I read tons of books, and the books used to say gentle art, and I used to think, man, I come home beat half to death, and I was never, and I never was anything that gentle about it. I mean, I broke my toes you know, numerous times in competition. I, I broke my ribs. Three and one night, two on one side and one on the other. And one night at one moment. Okay? This guy in our club loved him, he was so wacky. Man! He was, he was about 220 and I weighed 145 pounds. Okay? Right? What I'm trying to tell you is techniques, blocking, blocking is really easy if you use apply to. We want to get off the line of attack. You always want to get off the line of attack. You want to block. And you don't care what he does. Because we're using It doesn't matter what you call it. Okay? It doesn't matter. Alright? And when I, go, I, and I teach, when I do this demonstration with the U.S. Marine, I use a full steel tonto. 
and I generally shave my arm with it before I do the demonstration. Okay, I'm going to show you all one more. I'm going to get close so y'all can see. Gets closer, you can see. No, I'm two, two more. It's gets closer. This one has the less flash of all the full arm time. All right. All right. This, this is what we call a razor. This is what we call a, a razor cut. In Louisiana, pull the knife and pull my head, cut my head off, pull it on. Pull it, pull the knife all the way like this. Pull my head, pull it up, pull it. This is what we call, and, yeah, say the door. This is what we call say the door in Southern Louisiana. It means to make sleep. They tell babies to go to make sleep. You've heard that expression, right? Oh, of course. And they have parties. Which I feel you know means you party to your sleep. Well, if he pulls that knife across my throat as hard as he can, what happens? Pull it off. It's fade or go. Y'all got that? Now, I'm going to show you one that my sensei showed me, and I've shown it all around the world. And it's very simplistic. All right. I, he's here, he's got me like this, and I go, Can y'all see? Can anybody see the point of this technique? Anybody see the point in that technique? They can't do it like this. I see people try to do it like this and like this. Nah, you can't do that. It's for real. When I do this for real life, I have to hold back because I couldn't get any more who can't just volunteer out there. Okay? I pull hard this time. Can y'all see where the knife is? Come see where the blade went. Can y'all see? Pull hard on that knife there. Now watch, guys. Ooh, ooh. Now after about two times, he'll drop that blade. <laughs> y'all understand? That's real. Now, back to the knives now. That's what we're talking about. It's folding though. Somebody's robbing you. You're going to put it up against my throat. 
and I'm going to put my hands up, and I'm shaking. He's going to go through my pockets. Can y'all see? He's going through my pockets. Oh, God, please don't hurt me. Can y'all see the knife? Can anybody see it? Now, look, guys. Look. Here. Here. Come away, you got it. Okay. Can't you see it? And I'll get off my table. I just have a, I was, somebody told me I have a nice fetish. <laughs> I like learning this stuff. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Push it up against my throat. Oh, God! They don't have to cut his throat. You don't want it. Yes. You understand? Now, second one. This time, this time, pushing it up against my throat, you're making me tall. I always say, even before this life technique, the jujitsu or judo makes people, men taller of stature. Well, some of the locks I'll show you later, you'll understand why people are taller of stature once they do judo. It makes people tall. Now watch. You know, he's pushing against my throat, and I'm, I'm doing that all day. Oh God, now watch guys. Well, why can't you tell me? Why can't? Why can't? Then he pulls it toward me. Boom! I push it towards him. Again. Walk it, get man. Oh, he pushes. This is hard. And I go, oh, God. Can y'all see that? And then he just Sarah is breaking. Pushes, pulls it. These are just simple techniques. You know? You don't want to. You don't want to do that. You, if, if something happens, you're fighting with it. You can be a little bit Tell why you kick me, please. If you pull, me, please pull me onto you. Grab me. Grab me. Hey, pull on. <laughs> I like the looks. Ah. <laughs> All right, he's like a volunteer again. Look, guys. Young ladies, or in jujitsu, it might not, it might not be the, 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 the gentlest of technique, but it is the most effective. The stuff we do. I used to tell my students that in judo or jujitsu, we believe in the tar baby theory, and I'm not trying to be racist in my. You ever read the old book? Please don't touch me. Please don't touch me. He touched the tar baby, it's all over. When you touch the jujitsu man or the judo man, it's all over. I always plead for somebody to punch at me, kick at me, grab me. Okay? Someone across the room, I had problems with. You know, he's got the, the gun across the room, I had problems. That's my problem. Not a closing person. You know, I, I once would teach you in self-defense, had to be around about 82 at Tulane University. And I came out and I taught a whole bunch of I was about 28, and the young ladies were about 23 into 24, and they were beautiful. And they all had Mercedes, and they were, I had dad's money, and I came out and everyone and asked me, Mr. Gary, what if somebody sniped you? Upper window when you get in your car. I said, Well, I'll make parking lot die, bleed like everybody else. I'm, you know, I'm not super, but I do know self preservation. When I when I go somewhere I don't know, I look around. I look around at all my surroundings. When I go into a dark parking lot and try to park on a lit area, I look under my car, and in my car, when I'm getting in it, that's for you, by the way. Okay, look around. It'll save your life one day. Use your eyes. That's why God gave you eyes and ears. You can listen and see everything around you. Okay. When she gets around the block and her car, the guy in the back seat will scream for help. There you go. <laughs> hey, too many people have their, their heads in their purse when they're going to open their car or their head, their head in their phone. 
But that last text couldn't wait. It couldn't wait. That text couldn't wait. It really couldn't. And sometimes it'll get you killed. Okay? Alright? Moving right along. Uh, let's do a little something else extra since uh, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe we can do a little bit of around the video and stuff like that. We'll do a little around the video or something. Okay? Do a little something different. I'll show you one that. I'll show you one that Minoru Mochizuki showed me many months ago. He's dead. Minoru Mochizuki was one of Kano's direct students. Um, and I got the, the great honor of training with Mochizuki Sensei. And uh, uh, Mochizuki was, was different in the fact that he had trained, he was the fifth Diamond Shogun on the Gishin Funakoshi. He was a ninth degree in Aikido under uh, Yoshiba Mori Yoshiba Sensei, and he was a uh, eighth degree under Kano. I, somebody asked him some more why he was only a fifth degree, and he said, "Well, when Funakoshi Sensei died, that's all he promoted it up to, and he didn't think it was his place to promote himself." Okay, and I'm sure that's the way it was in June or what he figured. Kano was his direct teacher. How many other students promoted? Okay? That's the way he felt. Alright, well, he showed me a little, a little tweak on Nippon that I found really, really good. And I use it off a of block. And when I come here, I do it like this. Can you come around so you can see? Can you see that? Look how much of his key I'm grabbing. Can you all see that? Look. Can you see that? Mochizuki showed me that. I'm sure somebody, maybe, maybe, look. Look, I'm sure somebody like uh, Kotani or, or Mifune showed him. Or maybe Kano showed him himself. But block, boom, look. Look, guys. Boom, 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 look. It's the pressure. So you can see. Look, it's the pressure. Look, guys. Tell them what you, what you feel. Yeah, and good luck. And I can turn him over with that same move I want, right? Tap, tap. <laughs> I am not as bendy as I Understand? Yes. Same move, boys and girls, same move. Like I said, Mochizuki, and Mochizuki kind of got a bad rap. He was the imperial governor in, in China during the Second World War. Uh, the, the Japanese called him Manchukuko, okay? That was the uh, Japanese area where the Japanese did all the atrocities, you know, where they talk about in China, the Chinese atrocities. Well, he was a governor. He was lucky. He's like, he survived without being hanged on a firing squad by the Americans. But he did. And later on in his life, I got to train him. He had, he had, on the bottoms of his feet, were about this, the calluses were about this thick on the bottoms of his feet. What you need to experience, Mochizuki was a tremendous old man. Try it, please. Oh, that was a legend. I, I had him do all these twice. Twice. Kamoto Sensei and I was good friends. So, if you're, let's say you're playing hockey, yes. and, then, and then someone grabs your sweater, yes. you know in hockey how they just put the sweater over yeah. your head yeah. and start trying yeah. to How do you defend against that? Well, look guys. <laughs> Look, 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 the only reason, Galen, this is for you as well, the only reason a man grabs another man is to punch him. Okay? Unless, you know, what do you think? <laughs> a man would grab a woman, he's going to rough her up, slap me around a little bit. Okay, or he's going to take me somewhere. Okay? But a man driving, pulling, and, 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 and don't mm. punch me. I raise my hands. I raise my hands like so. Come down to his nose about four or five times. Then I do this. Can y'all see that? 
can't see it there. Yeah. That's actually what I do. Good for a living. Yeah, he's physical there. Oh, well, there you go. Yes. Here, he goes, he pulls me, goes, I raise my hands, can't move off the line. Bam, bam, bam. Look, guys, push, push right away, push. And if I don't want to do any more than that, I just do a high jujitsu head kick. That stuns him for about a week. <laughs> kick right at the base of the skull, stuns him for about a week. Amazing thing they can do in hospitals these things. Okay? Simplistic? Okay, that's very simplistic. That's probably the first technique of applied judo I ever learned. Uh, first technique I ever learned, uh, by the way, was oh gosh, number one hip throw. I learned number one hip throw, number two hip throw, I learned number one shoulder throw, number they don't necessarily know what one hip and two hip means. Oh, yeah. okay. That's the Kawaiishi method. That's how John right. used to teach it. That's how right. I learned it when I was a kid. Right. Number one hip throw, number one shoulder throw, number one foot throw, number one, you know, this is what you not done. Yeah, Kawashi Sensei, uh, if you've never read any, read any of his books, read them. Uh, my method of Juro is a tremendous text. Get your copy. My best material is tremendous. The PDFs are on our website under the library section. I have all. I have it uh, both in French and uh, English. There you go. My method of self-defense. Tremendous method of self-defense. Very simplistic, but very, very, very good. His his katas, seven katas of judo, are still good. They're still good to this day. They have whole systems of self-defense built on just his my method of self-defense. In Australia, New Zealand, they call it Kawashi Jiu-Jitsu. And what it is, is they've taken his manners, and they're very simplistic, but they do these techniques over and over, bloody over again. Some of these guys were really tough. I was really, when I, and, uh, when I was exposed to it the first time, I said, wow, all that from Kawashi Sensei. Kawashi Sensei was, was in Europe, he was like the father of judo in Europe. He went to Holland. Holland uses the Kawashi method. France used it. All of them used it. Uh, he was all over Europe. He spread into England. Okay? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I have something I'd like if, if you could possibly, this is definitely good people here. And we have a, a, a new young wrestler, we have a, an old wrestler, and a number of former wrestlers here. Can you think of some of the applied judo and how you would use it in wrestling? Oh, absolutely. Okay, so absolutely. I, I want to add and point out I, I started judo in 1970, I was just a little kid, and I had probably met you, but never really had a chance, never really knew you. And for years and years, I'd heard about Jack Garrett, Jack Garrett. It wasn't until after Jacques died, shortly after he died, I was at my old judo, uh, my old wrestling team, uh, Archbishop Rommel, and we were uh, practicing, and he's over on the side, and he, he calls me over and goes, hey, do you do judo? And I was mad at my head, and I, at that point, I had a feeling I knew that you were who you were. Yes. We, our paths never crossed, I'd moved away. And uh, he goes, yeah, I, I, I thought so. You were doing all kinds of foot sweeps and uh, Ochigari, Ko Ochigari. Uh, and uh, that, I ended up saying that today in uh, practicing uh, with this club afterwards. So, yes, it Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we're going to talk about wrestling. Um, my sons, both my sons are wrestlers. Um, my youngest son was was, was it 45 and 5? Something like that. 45 and 5 and we won the state, state, state title <laughs> here at 45 and 5. Um, only because his brother, his brother, his brother worked with him diligently and made sure he won. Mm -hmm. um, this one, this one, I'm not going to be embarrassed if I tell this. Okay. This one had about 46 wins. He was the number one rated wrestler in the state of Louisiana. Uh, he went into uh, the state meet and in the semis, 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 he blew out his name. 
So um, um, we uh, we called West Point Bowen and Join, and we scheduled we scheduled had scheduled surgery for Monday morning. Well, he wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, he was going to go out there with his knee, so they strapped his knee and bandaged his knee. And what I mean like that, it was like this. <laughs> and he said, Dad, if I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out in the warrior. I said, son, you made it to Sydney, you can go out your knee. Go home. Go home. I said, nah. So he went out there, and they lost. And the Sydney was with his knee falling out. And uh, he was the number one senior wrestler in the state. Okay. He was actually undefeated going into the state meet. Okay. Um, and uh, I had given him, I would, if I had blown out my knee, I would sit on the side and, uh, and ate popcorn and, 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 and did like this to my team. And he was the captain, so I would have screamed things to my team and, and sit on the side and scream. But no, he figured he had to go out there and be the captain no matter what. Okay, and that's the way it was. Okay, uh, now he did the hip throw, Koshi Goroma, which is a very common technique. Everybody in here knows Koshi Goroma, right? Very common technique. He did Koshi Goroma. Uh, he did Koshi Goroma. Koshi Goroma, please. Koshi Goroma, round the neck. Go. <laughs> okay, Koshi Goroma, go. And he threw it, I think he threw it 40 times for pegs. Okay? He's very good at it. Almost, almost 40. What? Probably 80% of the time. For pegs. And they knew he was going to throw a coach. He was either that or around the hip. And he's got a fairly good grab it. Uh, I shouldn't have had him grab it without the key. But uh, pick, please. Yeah. You're a wrestler, you understand, right? And you pick. Go. So you get him as he's stepping and the shot. As he's stepping, before he steps, when he has to start pointing, he plants that foot and walks all the way down here. And then back on it. But as he's stepping, he's going to get on. I think I'll be a half way. Does that make sense? Okay. This is a nice one as well. The pick works well. Okay. He's even used that BJJ. Oh, it's a lot easier than <laughs> <laughs> so, They fall down real easy that way. So, Trey, I, I, I remember you, you were at Holy Cross, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so, uh, I remember back when I was in high school, uh, a young um, judo player and wrestler by the name of Joe Myers. Remember that name? Uh, he was a brown belt at Jacques. His father was one of the black belts. Uh, and uh, one of his favorite uh, techniques was Harai Goshi. And I can remember one of the Holy Cross wrestlers going and pushing, pushing towards the end of the mat. And right at the end, he'd go in, in for a Harai Goshi sweeping hip throw and, and catch him right at the, That's right at the end. That's what his brother Goshi. That's what his brother did. A lot. He won a lot of tournaments for yeah. Harai Goshi. Yeah. No, no, no. I, uh, I, I was kidding him away because y'all y'all teach him, y'all since then, it's a Rommel grand. I was kidding that one of Trey's best friends was a Rommel grand. He became our uh, a seal, didn't he? Who's that? Stefan. Yes. Became a seal. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and Trey had a picture when he had his Facebook page of Stefano. Trey hip throw and Stefano, and all you could see is rubble, and then the, the <laughs> Stefano was flying over the top, rubble gone, going across <laughs> the top. Oh, yeah. And, and, uh, and he and Stefano called him up and says a few provocative words and says, I thought you were my friend. You put it on Facebook. <laughs> well, you guys know uh, Warren Donnelly, obviously, right? Uh, we know Warren real well. War teachers War in our club. War Warren and I were on the team together. Yeah. We, oh, really? Yes. He instructs in our club. Was Warren the same year as you? Warren and I were the same year. Uh, okay. Because one of my my best black belts, he's deceased now, was a role at the same yeah. time, or at that time, maybe a week younger, or just mm -hmm. maybe a year or so younger. His name was... Todd Weber, mm -hmm. and Todd played football for Wall mm -hmm. and uh, he was a uh, safety for Wall and uh, 
and uh, him and Frank Caracci. Caracci was Frank, Frank, Frank Caracci, Caracci was two years younger than me. He, he was a back for all. Frank Frank Caracci used to uh, train at our gym, the fitness clinic. Right. He was a he was a this a back this big. Mm -hmm. He was this tall, maybe, mm -hmm. and weighed two hundred thirty-five pounds. I remember when he was, I remember when he was one hundred thirty-two. <laughs> There's no joke. Maybe four or five guys on him, and he carried that long. Yeah. I, I remember Frank Gracie was one hundred thirty-two pounds. <laughs> well, he was. Hey, he was a big boy. He's a big boy. Tom, he was a senior. He was a big boy. Yeah. Big boy. Okay. So I'm curious. A lot of these guys are relatively new. Uh -huh. I know she is, uh -huh. but her biggest issue is always going to be is this. Okay. 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 Can we do it? Look, guys. Look. This is distracting. Look, guys. Look, guys. Let me show you why it works. Look. Punch in me, please. Look, guys. Tell me why it works. Oh, uh, <laughs> that works. <laughs> what? That works. Oh, it's my old age. Go. Punch, please. Look, guys. Look, he turns away. Oh, yeah. Okay. He don't get away that easy. Yeah. Okay. See how it works? Look, guys. Look. No matter what hand he, what hand he uses, look. Look. He punches at me. Look, guys. Can you see? Look. One, two, three. Tap, tap, tap. Oh, I thought you were nailing this for my old age. <laughs> See, people bow because of my old age these days. Oh, just tap if you feel something. Watch. Look, guys. If the hand's straight like that, you turn like that. If the hand's like this, you turn like this, you cut right through the middle. These are simplistic. Did you ask for them? It's good. It's you understand? Yes. Very simple techniques. Look, look, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Tell them what you feel. One, two, three. You don't feel anything, do you? <laughs> do you? Okay. He's just more flexible on us. What do you feel now? And if I push this way, what happens? Oh, right. Same way with you. It doesn't take power. It doesn't take power. Look, it doesn't take power. It, look, remember what I told you at the first. <coughs> if your judo or jujitsu takes power, you finish by 50. Mm -hmm. You hear me? You finish by 50. Unless you live in the weight room. I knew so many great, powerful judo players. I've known Olympic world team coaches. Bruce Toots. Uh, you know Bruce, right? Yep. Bruce Toots. Uh, there were a lot of really, really good ones I knew, stronger than Oxys. But when they got old, they couldn't do technique anymore. Something's wrong with that. I want to be able to do judo and jujitsu. Till I'm old. I always, when somebody comes in the, in my club, when somebody comes in my club and I'm trying to demonstrate technique, I do little, I do little tricks and I tell them, pick a finger, any finger, I'm gonna touch you with it. He touched my pinky. Now watch, guys. <laughs> look, look, guys. Tell them what you feel. He bows because he respects my H and H. <laughs> Since I made the age that I am, they just bow like that. Since it's old age. How do you explain Professor Katana? <laughs> the same way, the same way I I I explain Mori Yishiba. People who try to mimic Mori Yishiba when he was old do the sensei a great disservice. Mochizuki and and Gozo Shioda once told me about the founder of Aikido that they never, they called these dojo the hell dojo. And they never left the dojo that some orifice wasn't bleeding. 
And then there's a satellite, the, the guy you see on the video too, and, whoop, and people fall down. And you say, oh, that's mysterious. Yeah, it's mysterious, all right. Who cares or jump? I'm sorry, but who, who cares or jump? Okay? That's just the way it is. And sure, I have a black belt in Aikido. I do. And, I, and I've known some of the better Aikido people in, in the United States. To me, Kiru, uh, the highest ranking uh, Yoshinka person, I've known him, and we're friends. But if you're jumping, you're, you're not doing anybody any good. Okay? If you're jumping, you're not doing anybody any good. That's why I use real life when I'm doing knife defenses for seals, for marines, and all that. And I shave with it. And we use an aluminum baseball bat. And if you can't hear it, zing, when they're trying to, my students are trying to hit each other, <laughs> you're not doing it. Okay, I realized a long time ago that there's that this is a big truth, and they have techniques that work for sport, and they have techniques that work for real. Jagamofino, Anane, Jagamofino, Anane.